Target makes a surprising announcement to lure shoppers back to their store because they lost so many people to Walmart because so many people are having a hard time here in this economy and the high cost of living. We're going to talk about that and a lot more today. Hey, bulls and bears, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm doing good here. Uh, got the economic supervision blue blockers on today, so I hope you're fine. Uh, but let's get into that Target store here in a little bit. A couple things before we get to that here uh, that may be shocking, surprising to some of you, maybe not so much to others. Uh, but first, what do we have here? We've got uh, Michael Burry out there and John Paulson, both um, who called the housing crash back in 2007, 2008. But now they're saying gold is where to be. Now, if you have gold, that may be good news. But it's also a dangerous, I think, warning because when gold goes up, that means inflation is really a problem. And we've seen metals go up in price here. But if people had to choose, I think they would take lower metal prices along with lower inflation or no inflation. How's about deflation, right? That's almost been a, become a dirty word now, deflation. Uh, nobody in position of power wants deflation because that goes against all the economic indicators that they put out there. Remember, the GDP uh, is reliant on uh, massive amounts of debt being accumulated and borrowing, borrowing, borrowing more money, right? So uh, it's very interesting when you see uh, somebody like Michael Burry talking about the uh, the upside of gold. Uh, he put in a um, $8 million wager on gold, right? So we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, I've told you here what I think about the, the hard assets and precious metals. But first of all, let's talk about, uh, before we get out of the Target story, what's going on down in Florida? We know the cost of living is a problematic. One of the big things, especially in a state like Florida, where so many people moved to after 2020, is insurance rates, right? So you have overpopulation there now, a surge of uh, influx of people coming to the state, and now we've got 125% increases in some of the insurance bills uh, for Florida homeowners, right? How do you handle more than doubling of an insurance bill? Insurance was already expensive, now 125%. Uh, and the companies are fully justified in doing that. The, the companies, the insurance companies, they have to get approval to raise their rates through the state insurance commission, right? So the state insurance commission is approving that. And if they don't, then companies basically threat to leave the state so the state they're kind of backed into a corner uh the state insurance commission because if they don't if they say you can't raise the rates if they say that to a company then the company could be more likely to just move out of the state because it may not be worth the risk especially in a state like florida we have the hurricane risk so this begs the question how much more of this can Florida homeowners take? We're already seeing a pretty big increase in inventory of homes for sale in Florida, right? So it's not like this doesn't have any consequences, right? Eventually, the rubber meets the road and the household budget just cannot take uh, more rate increases, more uh, rising inflation, cost of living increase. Eventually, people tap out and they're going to put their home on the market. We're already seeing the uptick in Florida. Uh, it's going to spread through other states, maybe not as quickly, uh, but Florida, we said this here a couple of years ago, that Florida was going to be one of the states that's going to see big troubles in the cost of living and homeowners in that state are having a hard time. Um, let's go ahead and talk about Target here. So Target is actually responding in a smart way. Instead of just raising their rates or raising their prices, rather, uh, they're actually cutting costs on a lot of items, cutting prices out of CNN here. Target is cutting prices on up to 5,000 items to lure inflation-weary shoppers back to the store. Remember, we saw places like Target and, and even high-end places lose business as people downgraded to Walmart because of the cost of living, right? Even income, uh, household incomes of 100,000 plus downsized or downgraded to Walmart. It's pretty interesting. Target has slashed prices on more than 1,500 popular items beginning immediately, ranging from butter, laundry detergent, as the retailer attempts to attract inflation-weary shoppers. Well, the food items at Target, in my opinion, are pretty overpriced. You might remember last month we talked about uh, how I like the 99-cent store. In fact, I'm drinking a drink I got from the 99-cent store before they closed down. Is anybody else a fan of the Co 
don't know how you say this. Co kombucha blueberry ginger. Stuff's delish, folks. I'm kind of depressed that I won't be able to find deals like that for 99 cents. Um, at Target, something like that might run you about 350, like so more than double the price. So they are slashing some prices. So uh, people that say I never have good news, you're wrong. Target is cutting prices. And you ask, do I hear you asking this? Yes, I hear you ask, how good are the price cuts? Well, here's a couple examples. Uh, butter, unsalted butter dropping from $3.99 to $3.79. All right, everybody is saved. Clorox wipes being reduced from $5.79 to $4.99 and 80 cent savings, folks. That's what we need. Uh, no problems at all. The, uh, the debt levels are fully sustainable now, now that we've saved uh, 20 cents on our butter. All right. Uh, so let me know what you think about that down below here. Um, speaking of housing and cost of living, we've got Graceland foreclosure for the Elvis estate. And this is uh, pretty interesting. Are people still going to Graceland to visit? Do people just want to, do they want to pay money to go visit Graceland? So it's very interesting. In Memphis, Graceland, historic home of Elvis, is set to be sold off at a foreclosure Thursday. Um, but they're fighting back. They're saying there's a lawsuit here. A restraining order granted money, according to the attorney. They're saying it's a scam. Uh, Priscilla Presley, Lisa Marie's mother, and Elvis's ex-wife wrote on her ex-account. So um, pretty interesting when the estate of Elvis can't even afford uh, to keep their residence. All right, folks, let's talk about what's happening over at Tesla. We know that Tesla have seen, has seen a ton of layoffs and the layoffs are continuing. Now, what kind of culture does that bring to the company when you see your friends, your coworkers getting laid off? Um, let's put out here out of the bite here, Tesla employees walking on eggshells as furious Musk layoffs continue. Quote, it's too much to ask for a company to hold some accountability and put up an end to the uncertainty. I tell you what, it wouldn't be people wouldn't be walking on eggshells if it people weren't so over leveraged right now. Imagine you have a thousand dollar a month car payment. Maybe your mortgage is three thousand a month. Who knows? Maybe four thousand, depending on where you're at. Uh, imagine having all these expenses, and now you're you know you're on the chopping block. <laughs> uh, it's not a laughing matter. It's almost you almost have to laugh at it because it's so sad. Because so many people are in this situation. You're walking on eggshells, basically. You see everybody else getting laid off, all your coworkers, and you know that one or two missed paychecks, your car is gone, uh, your home is going to be getting red or maybe pink slips in the mail, that uh, you're behind on your payments. If everything was more affordable, it wouldn't be a big deal. You get laid off, you a few months here to look for another job. People are so stressed out right now that one missed paycheck is a big deal. Right. So this is uh, one of the downsides of, of the many downsides, one of the downsides of the cost of living. You're constantly uh, worried and concerned that you're going to miss a paycheck there, especially when you start seeing these big uh, layoffs. All right. Next update on the bank reform, quote unquote reform, which is not a reform. Um, we talked about this several times, but just to get you up to speed on this, if you're not familiar, uh, ever since 2020, banks had an emergency um system put into place where they could actually loan out money even if they didn't have any money in their deposits in their vaults right and that's called the reserve requirement so because of the bank runs or the possibility of just people pulling the money out of the bank because they have to go spend the money just to keep up with the cost of living because of all these things and the need to keep the economy funded and to continue to give out loans and credit card limit increases, all these things, banks had to have this zero reserve, uh, zero capital requirement put into place in 2020. And that came out as an emergency uh, rescue for the economy. But here's the thing, here we are four years after 2020, it's still in place right now. And the banks were fighting against putting, putting it back to where you actually had to have some money uh, in reserves here. The Fed reportedly backing off on tougher capital requirements right we told you this was likely to happen because once you put a rescue plan in place it's very difficult to get people or to get anything back off of it look at what's happening uh, with rents we see rents um, are 
uh, the the, uh, the late rents are skyrocketing. We see foreclosures ticking up again ever since all those other programs that were put into place for those uh, housing needs. Those were expired and we're seeing it now that they can't really let the banks go back to normal. Uh, sources tell the Wall Street Journal that regulators are now considering the plan that would significantly reduce the almost 20% mandated increase in capital for America's largest banks. They were going to go from zero to 20%. That's uh, enormous, right? Uh, so, of course, the CEOs came out there. They said, no, this is going to be detrimental the, to the economy. And they're right, because if people can't borrow money, if banks have to have so much, or in this case, it's still little, 20%, but if they have to have money put back, that's going to limit how much they can loan out. And the economy can't function right now. With any sort of limits on the lending, the economy would not function, right? If banks had to tighten, uh, this whole house of cards would come down very, very quickly. So no surprise to that, that we see the Fed, you know, backing off on that uh, proposal to raise those capital requirements. All right, we're headed into summer. Uh, what's the first day of summer in less than a month now, right? School's out. Consumers will use their credit cards to pay for summer travel. So that's what people are doing now. We talked about this in our last report. You go out to places, you see all these people spending money at the bars, at the clubs, uh, at the store. All right, everybody's um, packing the sports stadiums, buying $8 hot dogs, wherever they cost now. They're like, how can this be if what Bull Boom Bear Bust is saying is true? If so many people are tapped out, how can this be? Folks, it's debt. Why do you think the debt continues to increase every time we look at it? In 2008, debt actually decreased because at the beginning of the crisis, banks severely pulled back on the, on the lending, on the credit card limits. They pulled back. That's not happening right now, right? Less than one in five banks are actually tightening right now, right? And that's what, it, that's the key to keep this thing rolling. And that's why I'm saying we may not see any sort of crash or collapse or correction until the banks are forced in some way or another, until they're forced to tighten up their lending. Because this whole thing is based on borrowing money, people going out and spending the money, and that way they can pretend the economy is good. But when that stops or even pauses or slows down the increase, then you see big, big problems. Another increase here in some states, childcare can cost twice as much as rent. Uh, folks, this is happening in 11 states. Imagining you have a mortgage and now you've got a kid that needs daycare, childcare, and you're paying twice as much for that as you are your mortgage. How crazy is that? Uh, or your rent. Now, what if you have two or three kids? You're going to be paying three times your housing cost uh, for childcare. So a lot of People just quit their job just to stay home because it doesn't make sense to work when uh, child care costs so much. You almost save money by not working in this case. Uh, but hopefully you have a spouse or somebody else there to pick up the slack, a significant other. Um, U.S. News put this out here. Very interesting headline. Here's why Americans are confused and angry about the economy. There's plenty of data saying the economy is doing well, but the inflation still leaves consumers angry and frustrated. So why are... Why are consumers confused and angry? Well, if they just watch the business news, they're told everything's great. Look at the low unemployment number. In the meantime, we've got 100 million, nearly 100 million out of the labor force. Uh, we have a whole basket of goods and services that are not counted in the inflation number. So they're telling you inflation is only three something percent, actually much worse. They're telling you unemployment's low actually much worse. And even the jobs that are out there, do they pay enough to keep up with the cost? No, these are mostly service sector jobs. Maybe you're working in a call center somewhere. Maybe you're pushing buttons somewhere, right? These are not uh, high paying, high demand manufacturing jobs. Uh, even the ones that are, that were high paying, look at Tesla do, doing a lot of layoffs, right? Uh, folks, this is the sign of the times and I hope you're navigating it well. I think we're going to be just fine. But I hope every one of you liked this update today. If you like these reports, please make sure you subscribe and uh, help us stay alive here uh, on this platform and uh, come back for more news, economic updates. It's very important right now because we're headed into a very turbulent time for this, uh, this economy. This is uh, something this year. I think we're going to see things play out this year, later this year, that we haven't seen uh, maybe in forever. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a very eye opening slash uh, shocking year, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, because we're headed towards a brick wall. Consumers are already starting to tap out what's happening in Florida. We're going to see a lot of things coming out of Florida first. Uh, Florida may be the starting point of this next economic transition. 
will it be a downturn or will it be in, will it be inflationary will they throw so much money at this uh at this downturn that it's gonna make prices stay elevated right your guess is as good as mine please let me know what you think down below i'm positioning for both because i don't know what these crazy people uh the people in power right now i don't know what they're gonna do right these people are maniacs right right <laughs> hope everybody's well um what do you think about this do you agree with me if, am i on point uh let me know down below and we'll see your comments very soon we'll talk to you very soon everybody keep stacking by for now peace